I just want to show everybody real quick in the beginning of the video how I did this. You want to go into this repository. The link's going to be down at the bottom of the video. Um, you want to download this. And then basically what you're going to do is you're going to add your API key, your client key and secret for Adobe Analytics. And you want to make sure to have all the packages installed and follow the instructions in the video. And then you have to update your path to where your um, folder directory is for your R project in here so it can run this script with a batch file that you have actually triggered by Windows Task Scheduler, as you can see right here. I've got it set up to where it runs that actual um, file. And then the only other thing you have to update is uh, this guy right here is where you add your report suites, okay? And if you watch the rest of the video, you'll be able to see how to set this up to where it automates and creates a, um, bunch of local files that it exports into an XLSX file and then also the equivalent of um, how it creates a Google Sheet that is basically identical and after you run it the first time manually you, it is set up in my R script to automatically update so you can set this up to update daily if you want and uh, really cool setup and just inspired from like Randy Switch and Tim Wilson when they originally created the um, SDR in 60 seconds and then Tim Wilson's uh, extension of that but anyways I hope you enjoy the video make sure to like or subscribe and keep watching my content cheers so today I'm gonna show you a really cool tutorial of how I set up an automated SDR for Adobe Analytics using R and using Google Sheets as well um, and task scheduler with Windows. So this is specifically for Windows. If you're going to be using Linux or Mac, you're probably going to set up some kind of like a cron job with some kind of a batch file as well to run this particularly. But today, specifically, this is going to be with Windows. So I'm sorry for all the other, um, you know, operating systems out there. But uh, first, let's go ahead and just start with where the inspiration came from. Uh, originally, there was a SDR doc. Uh, creator that I found um, by Tim Wilson and that was originally inspired from uh, Randy Switch's uh, blog article about creating an SDR in 60 seconds and there are some things on here I need to update on my script like I probably should be using Pac-Man to load the packages for better package management but um, <clears throat> ultimately all I really did was I um, created a batch file and then I um, added the Google Sheets uh, library installed that package and then authenticated with an auto refreshing token and so ultimately let's go ahead and pop in here all these links are going to be included as well in the description for the video but I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and just show you what's going on <clears throat> So right here we have a um, script that's saying I want to start the script and start timing it and then load all these packages. So you got R site catalyst, quite a few others in here you'll probably recognize if you know R, write XLS because you have to basically export um, like a CSV or an XLSX file first before you do your Google Sheets. Um, Upload, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can skip that process, but I wanted to have a local file as well as a Google Sheets file, so that's why I did that. And then you, right here, you're authenticating with Google Sheets. The first time when you install the package, go ahead and install it when you're in this project and then load it and then run this function right here. And it's gonna have you log in and give authorization to R so it can um, be authorized to access your Google Sheets and administer so it can upload that sheet and actually refresh it because that's the cool part about this script is uh, when you run it the first time you create the sheets you upload them for the first time and then you have an overwrite function that is set um, and basically it will refresh the SDR as time goes on as you make changes with your Adobe Analytics configuration in the UI okay and then um, you also have to have Perl installed. If you don't know what Perl is, go ahead and look it up. Um, you can use Strawberry Perl. There's very different, a few different varieties and flavors of Perl you can use, but um, you can just use standard Perl. And when you run this, um, this basically will come back telling you if all the modules needed to run Perl are working correctly because you need those. And uh, it pretty much says it in the notes that are in there. And then this is just setting um, the start date and the end date for pulling data because it actually does pull some sample data. 
which I'll show you. Um, and then in here we're, we're setting our keys and you want to put your API key inside of these quotes, your client, and then put your secret right here. Okay. And then basically you're just putting both of those in variables that you're going to put down here because you're going to actually authenticate with the Adobe Analytics API. And then down here, let's see here, I have my folder directory. What we're doing here is um, you have to put the report suites in a CSV file if you're going to be doing this for multiple report suites, which I'm going to assume most people tend to have multiple report suites, whether it's their development and production. But pretend this is the CSV. This is the, like, let's say, cell A1. You have to have RSID in there, and then I shouldn't have put RSID 1 and RSID 2. These are your report suites. So you can put as many of them in here as you want. You can put 2, you can put 1, you can put 20. Um, basically, it's going to run through each of these uh, report suite IDs that you put in the CSV file that's in your folder directory. Because you can see mine right here. Um, I've got basically my two report suites that it's generating, um, and it actually labels the files after those report suites as well when it saves them. So just keep that in mind. You need to have RSID in that first cell, and then the following is where you put the actual others and save that as a CSV file that's uh, named RSID.csv, okay? Because you're going to be calling that from your R script. And so let's go back down to that spot again because you can see it right there. And then what it's doing here is you put any metrics you want to exclude, which I've done that. I've just used the standard that Tim was using. And then basically down here, it's gathering all of the different elements, the EVAR props, and it's, it's pretty much just setting all the variables before it does um, basically the full script and runs through to build out that SDR and actually throw all the data into the data frame. And so all of this, you really don't have to add anything extra. So the way that I built this, or actually Tim built it, and then I had uh, forked off of it, was you just need to put your keys up here. You need to make sure to install all your packages and then authenticate with Google um, for Google Sheets. And then really all you have to so really all you're doing is you're just basically adding that stuff above loading the packages and then when you come down here you have to update these because this is when we're going to be basically uploading the Google Sheets after it has created um, the XLSX files so you'll notice if you let's say run this in chunks you want to just run like this block all the way down to right about here to where it says generate a single Excel file and then run this chunk and you'll notice that it's going to start cycling through each report suite and running it and then exporting into an XLSX file for each report suite and it's going to name each of those XLSX files the report suite ID you can see right here. And so you'll notice in your directory, your project directory, after you're done, if you've done like 10 report suites, it's going to have 10 XLSX files. And so you have to create one of these for each XLSX file that gets exported or actually created and dumped into your project folder. And the reason why I say this here is you have to run this the first time like this because what it's gonna do is it's going to upload the XLSX file and it converts it into a Google Sheet. And basically you need to put the name of the report suite for each one like so, like your first report suite, your second report suite, and then name it whatever you want over here for the sheet name. And you're going to run this first for however many report suites you have. So once you're done with that, you can either add the number signs in front or just delete this whole chunk altogether. Then you're going to run, you're going to leave these in the automated um, R script when you're done. Sorry about all that. I'm fumbling on my words here. And the reason why is, is because you have this function in here that's actually going to let it update and overwrite that sheet. Why is that important? Well, 
I wanted to have a dynamic SDR to where you could look at it at any time and know exactly what your implementation is. Eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an import range and bring all these into a master sheet in Google Sheets because it's easier for me to mold it to there. And what I'm going to do is make it to where I can see them side by side, but I figured that um, the best way to do this would be to have a dynamically updating SDR because we like that we want to see side by side and it's quicker to you know work on our implementation or to build off of that when it's just easier and it's there and it's automatic and it's up to date so ultimately these are the two lines that if you're only doing two report suites that is that are hard-coded other than up above where you had to actually put your API key and secret in um, so it's pretty simple script literally it's only gonna take a few minutes of work after you you know download this repository and then you make sure to have Perl ready to go and all the other stuff because when you're done with that let's get on to the next part basically in your folder you're gonna have these output files and they're gonna look like this and sorry I have everything blurred out here it's just to keep everything confidential um, because you know these implementations are custom but it also produces a sample file and it shows you um, the date range of the last 30 days and it's showing you if it has value or hasn't have value so you can tell right off the bat you could set up conditional formatting when this gets uploaded into a Google Sheet but here's the output file and then when it does the export to Google Sheets it looks like this it looks identical and you can see here it says last edit was an hour ago and if I were to pull up the revision history you'll see that it ran um, yesterday as well and it automatically updated all of this data and there was different values that were in here than were in there yesterday because it's progressed today and so it's really cool because um, the last time I did this I had a master SDR that um, one of my colleagues at work and my previous employer had put together in Python when he saw this R script and it was really cool because I had a master SDR that basically had side-by-side -side views with um, all of the report suites and basically showed which EVARs and props and events were uh, enabled and what type of you know configurations were set up for each site side-by-side -side in one sheet to where it was really pretty. Um, but other So let's go back to this folder. This is the repository. So um, to make this simpler, really what you're going to do is you're just going to download this and then you're going to create a new R project and you're actually going to you can you can open this right here if you want and um, when you because you already have an existing directory once you unzip this file and then basically what you're going to do is you're going to edit a few lines in there and then you have to add your report suites in here and then this is important because this is the batch file that you're going to use with Windows Task Scheduler so you need to put your username here if you're in Windows and then whatever the directory or path is the rest of this to this this cloned repository that you've unzipped and you've actually loaded in R and then we've already got the main file in there um, labeled as this so really all you should have to do is update this and then when you go into task scheduler you go in there and you're just gonna run a start a program um, action and then set up a trigger of when you want it to run and then basically when you run it from here it's going to go ahead and run that and the cool part is is that it also will create a log file um, so you can see if let's say something breaks what exactly went on so you can see here it's actually um, a log of when it ran through that R script last time so I'm sure there's some other things I can do too to um, improve this with like you know a better detailed log or whatnot but I just wanted to share this today because it was really cool and um, I wanted to show everybody how I put it together make sure to subscribe to my channel or follow me on LinkedIn and um, thanks for watching take care